Welcome everybody and I'd like to give a caveat to say that I'm just at the edge of my training, my 400 hours of training in hypnotherapy. We should have graduated at the end of May but of course there's something called a virus going around so that's been delayed slightly. However, um, I feel fairly confident to just tell you what I've learned in the last few months and share that with you and that might pique your interest into looking into hypnotherapy or hypnosis further. So um, as you may or may not know, I've been practicing natural medicine for about 10, 12 years. I'm a, I did nutrition and naturopathy and homeopathy for a few years and various colonic irrigation, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I recognized that I had a skill set that was missing. Um, we talk about the mind-body-spirit connection. And although homeopathy can support the mind and the spirit, um, it was still very physical-based. There was there was there was a gap in my skill set because i've had and i've noticed over the years that somebody can have part of them really wants to make beneficial changes to their diet beneficial changes to their life um but something's holding them back and i know that for myself as well i'm really good at telling people what to do but i don't always follow that advice myself and i've often wondered what is it about me that i don't seem to have that final push and it's it's various different things and we call them things like secondary benefits but i think all of us have areas of our life that we are getting in the way of we are the ones that are stopping us from reaching our highest potential um and there's there's a statement i came across today or in the last few days that i'd like to share with you and i think it's really um really important and it, it is and I put it on my Instagram this morning that life is 10% what we experience and 90% of how we respond to that again life is 10% what we experience and 90% of how we respond to that so an event we all know that we've heard the story that rain is just rain but to the bride it's a terrible thing to the farmer it's a wonderful thing many events in our lives are neutral but it's how we respond to that and hypnotherapy can support the behavioral aspects of our lives the cognitive aspects of our lives and the way we think because when we're in the hypnotic state it's a state where the subconscious and the conscious mind are more open which leads me to sort of the introduction of to you know what is hypnosis and there's lots of different sort of definitions of hypnosis out there the one i like the best is um where hypnosis or hypnotherapy really is just a concentrated state of attention um with in response to the hypnotherapist working with the person it's not um going under it's not asleep it's a gentle state that we experience numerous times throughout the day um, when we brush our teeth we go into that hypnotic state when we're watching a movie and we're just kind of zoning out that's the hypnotic state perhaps you're familiar with the apps or any sort of meditation those that calm app or something and when we just relax and allow the mind to just gently focus on one thing and of course with uh, hypnotherapy you're having a custom session you come to the hypnotherapist you say these are the behaviors that are getting in my way or these are the thought processes that are not suiting me or no longer serving me so i would like support in addressing these and together they come up with you know the hypnotherapist comes up with a way of using the techniques that are used to support that person so um I chose to study hypnotherapy because of those reasons, because I recognized that, you know, somebody would come to me to lose weight, I would give them a good diet, I would give them all the homework to do, but then there was just, it just didn't happen for whatever reason. So it's about addressing those, the cognitive, the behavioral, and um, the emotional side of things that we, we all bring to any experience. So a little bit of the boring stuff I cut out. There's lots and lots of history on hypnosis, but the man that sort of is given the idea that he first invented it is a man uh, in the 1730s named Franz Anton Mesmer. And it's 
where we get the word mesmerism from or to um, mesmerize. And that I think is responsible for a lot of the misbeliefs and, and myths out there around hypnosis um, that we mesmerize the person to where they're incapacitated or against their will. And this is entirely false. Um, when you are in a hypnotic state, you are in complete control. You could say that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, um, and it's just a guided, a guided meditation from the hypnotherapist. So from the 1730s, the next person fast forward that you will have heard of that, that worked a little bit in his early career with hypnotism or hypnosis was, of course, Sigmund Freud in the uh, late 1800s. And then his contemporary who followed on from that would be Carl Jung. There's lots of people in between, but they're, they're not as interesting <laughs> to the non-hypnotist, that is. So there's also, you're aware of perhaps the two different types, the stage hypnosis and sort of the private hypnosis, the more hypnotherapy. And then you've got the hypnosis side of things that's more for entertainment. Um, that That is two very different camps. Um, the school that I'm going to isn't, isn't doesn't teach us necessarily the, uh, the stage hypnotism. So we're really only focused on supporting people to make beneficial changes in their lives. So um, it's a focused state of intention as, and we, I would like to open it up before later on in the session, I'm going to do a, you know, a bit of a hypnotherapy session with you guys. And so we'll go into that later, but you're welcome to put any questions that you have towards um, later on. So, the behavioral and the cognitive and the analytical approaches can be dealt with during hypnosis. And um, I'd like to talk a little bit about different mind patterns or brainwave patterns. And this is, again, sort of informs how hypnosis works. So we have back in the 50s, the primary brainwave patterns were discovered and they were called, and you may already know this, alpha, beta, theta, delta. There's another one called gamma, but we won't go into that. So alpha was found first, which is why they called it alpha, and it's the strongest. Interestingly enough, that's the state we are in when we're in hypnosis, and it's the state that we're in when we're just, um, you know, gently daydreaming, actually. It's the daydreaming state. It's the not quite paying attention. It's not the beta state, which is the next one. The beta state is what you and I, or certainly I am in now. My primary brainwave right now would be beta because I'm talking and I'm engaging and I'm, you know, consciously working. I'm not, you know, drifting off into la la land. So then we have the theta delta, the theta as we're starting to fall asleep, perhaps a deeper state of hypnosis. And then of course, delta, deep sleep. So our brain waves, interestingly enough, are always, those are always going on, but we will have a primary one. So at the moment, primarily, you're most likely in beta. So that would be sort of an idea of who started it, what it is, and that took a lot less time than I was expecting. <laughs> Does anybody have sort of any questions with regards to hypnosis or have you ever tried it or do you have any sort of burning questions or perhaps any sort of fears about even trying it so let's get those out of the way before we we do um you know like a, a, a little session does anybody have any questions they'd like to type in i have one question for my Good. my 11 years old boy when i told him yeah why don't you join us today for the hypnosis session yeah. mommy i know everything about hypnosis she will take that thing and she will be us to speak um and I think subconsciously, this is what we all expect. Yes. My key question is, is there or was there back in the days of hypnosis? Yeah. Really, really, people would have been able to control our minds by putting us in a state of... I, I think that was an early belief system. And, you know, you've got the sort of collective consciousness of beliefs so that people would engage more in those behaviors. Back in the 1950s and the 60s, maybe even the 70s, and more with stage hypnosis, 
you know, the stage hypnotist would find somebody that's really suggestible and, and really sort of make, make that person their sort of spectacle. We've come a long way since those days, you know, Hopefully. there's no way anybody that's going to sign up to any sort of governing body that's had any proper training would ever consider doing that sort of thing. Um, but no, it isn't mind control. Um, and that, that is a very, very permanent false belief that is absolutely out there. And I come across it all the time. Um, yes, you can use the pendulum. You can use the pen. Um, <laughs> however, I think we've again gone on from that where we are now sort of really more of a talking therapy. And because so many more people, if you think about it, in the last even five years, the apps that we have that bring us sort of down the yoga nidri, which we're doing a bit of today, where we scan the body, the body scan, and allow each part of our bodies to relax. That's used in so many different disciplines now. And you could say that actually hypnotherapy didn't start it necessarily. I think the yogis did. But now it's something you hear all over the place. So yes, thank you. <laughs> we have a shy, shy audience. So I'll, a shy I, will, audience. I will ask another question. So okay. I, how many sessions of hypnotherapy you need to do? What's the minimum sessions that you need to do for, for a specific pattern? Mm, you know, good for question. your brain to actually adjust and go out of that pattern. Good question, Nihil. Um, again, how long is a piece of string? Depending on the problem, how long it's been there, how stuck it is, and the person and how suggestible they are and how willing they are for change. You know, I think that some of us we talk in college about um, secondary benefit. And so sometimes things like weight loss can be hugely complicated. You know, there's a lot going on with um, weight loss, especially, um, and our relationship to food and, and stuff like that. I, I've done a few sessions online with clients. And to be honest, I've actually been quite surprised at how beneficial it is because I, I just I don't know because it does seem so simple it really is a lot it's been the easiest thing really that I've learned um, because it is just a talking therapy there hasn't been a lot of memorizing there's not been a lot of drawing of hearts and the diagrams and all that stuff it's very gentle but also very effective so I have found people get much better really with one session um, but again, I think it's also in natural medicine, we talk about layers of the onion. You can fix one thing or amend one thing, but then something else will come up to the surface. And the client goes, actually, that's better, but now I want to address this, you know, or now I want to, now that I've cleared that path, I can see the next layer has come up. You know, it's almost like you cut the grass and then you can see the weeds. <laughs> so it's all about the layers. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good question, thank you. Any other questions? You can put it on chat. You don't have to put your cell phone on video if you don't you want to. You can type it in. Uh, you can stay with pyjama days if this is what you're doing today. Uh, so just if anyone wants to put their questions on chat, you can do it now or ongoing. Um, and then we can, we can answer questions later on. So Karami, I'll, you know. Okay. Well, let's go um, right to the session then. Um, I won't go through any more myths or misconceptions because I think I've addressed a couple of the really, really big ones. So what I would invite you to do is, everybody out there, um, just get comfortable. Ideally, don't have uh, the laptop on your lap because you want to be able to move gently or move without um, distracting yourself. So just take a minute now to... Um, put the computer or laptop or whatever it is uh, away from you so that you can still hear my voice. And the other thing that would be helpful is if you put in some earbuds or some headphones because then you're less likely to hear any outside noises or distractions um, that might be helpful as well. And um, just ensure, please, it's only going to be a few minutes, 10 minutes perhaps, um, to just give yourself permission to spend these next few minutes really just allowing yourself to deeply relax and enjoy the process and just let go of any sort of um, preconceptions and, um, and, I'll, and I'll begin. So I'll, I'll just uh, 
invite you to take a few breaths, getting comfortable and know that if you do need to suddenly get up and, and attend to anything important, you may do so. Even if you're deeply into the hypnotic state, you can always get up and respond um, fully and completely. And also if you, um, if you need to move, that doesn't affect the situation. It'll only support you to go further into a, a nice hypnotic state. So getting comfortable and just focusing on your breath, just allowing yourself to notice what you notice. Notice your in-breath coming in, how it fills the chest and, and exhaling. And after you've done this a couple of times, just gently close your eyes. And Mikhail, if you could please put your video on so I could see you and so I can respond to what you're going through. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Okay. So again, nice deep breath in and exhale. And another time, this time holding your breath for three seconds at the top and exhaling all the way out. And once again, holding the breath for three seconds and exhaling all the way out and your eyes should be closed if they're not already. And just allow yourself to focus on the sound of my voice and any other noises that you hear on this side of yours only help you to feel more deeply relaxed, deeply calm and peaceful. And again, giving yourself permission to spend the next little while tuning into your own rhythms and your own deep sense of peace and relaxation. That's it. So as you sit there, gently listening and hearing and feeling your own in-breath and out-breath. I'd like you to imagine a golden ball a few inches above your head. And this golden ball is shining brightly, a brilliant, hue of gold, almost like a little sun. And everything that this golden ball touches, it brings a deep, warm sense of perfect peace and relaxation. And allow that beautiful golden ball to gently touch the top of your head. And as it does so, just feel how your scalp absorbs that radiant light and begins to soften and relax. And as it descends, it covers your forehead and your eyebrows and they welcome the feeling and the chance to let go of any stress, any tension. And as it begins to go down your eyes, your eyelids become deeply heavy and they welcome the feeling of peace and all those little muscles around your eyes begin to relax. They work so hard during the day. And this is now their time to relax completely. And notice how much stress we hold in our cheeks and our jaws. And you can let your jaw relax entirely. And perhaps it'll even go slack. And the tongue begins to unfold and gently fill your mouth because it too holds so much stress. And notice how that golden light begins to descend down your neck. The warm, relaxing feeling going down your spine with each vertebrae, expanding and relaxing and releasing with each breath. And that golden light begins to expand across your shoulders and down your arms. 
And I don't know if your left arm is becoming more heavy and more warm, or maybe your right arm is becoming more deeply relaxed. But notice how your hands begin to extend with the light of the golden ball. And the palms of your hands begin to radiate warmth and peace. And each finger is bathed in the golden light of this deep relaxation. And if you were in your mind's eye to look at your hands, you would see that this golden light goes past each finger. And your body is becoming enveloped in the most peaceful, relaxing light you ever thought possible. And this light begins to go down the chest warm and comfortable and down the body that's it allowing every stress and tension to let go with each exhale and as you breathe in this golden light this warm peaceful light it begins to descend down down your back and hips and watch it flood down your legs and over your knees, past your calves, past the ankles, enveloping you and deeply relaxing you. And when you hear me say the word now, it is your subconscious mind's cue to go even deeper into relaxation, even deeper into trance, a beautiful state of peace. Now, that's it. And the feet and the toes, all your body is bathed in this warm, peaceful light that the golden ball has given to you. And sit within its brilliance, its peace and tranquility. And I'd like you to take a little walk in your mind's eye down a corridor, a well-lit corridor. And you come across a door. And above that door are the words, favorite place of relaxation. And as you walk through the door, you're going to find the most beautiful scene you could ever imagine. The most wonderful, enchanting place that your mind could ever have possibly imagined a place so perfect for you, a place you would like to come back to again and again, again and again. Perhaps it's some place you've been before, or perhaps it's entirely a fantasy. But it's a place where you can go anytime you wish to deeply relax. Notice what you notice. Notice any sounds you hear. Feel how it feels under your feet. Have a good look around, 360, and see what your mind presents to you, and note how beautiful it is and how perfect for you. Isn't it wonderful to come here in this wonderful state of deep relaxation? And I invite you to take a seat somewhere and imagine a sky above your head, a bright blue sky. And in that sky, you're going to find 10 fluffy little white clouds. And each cloud represents some stress or worry that you might have. And as every cloud begins to disappear one by one, and I'll count it down you'll find yourself becoming even more relaxed, stress-free, worry-free, knowing that whatever happens, it will turn out okay. So looking up at that sky, that brilliant blue sky, you'll notice that there's now only nine little clouds. And the ninth cloud begins to fade and dissipate, with leaving eight. And there goes the eighth cloud, and now only seven are left in that brilliant blue sky. The seventh begins to move off on its own, and it now is leaving too. The sixth cloud begins to gently fade, with only five left now. Every worry leaving, 
now. The fourth cloud begins to fade. It too is now gone, with only three little fluffy white clouds left in that perfect blue sky. And the third starts to move away, and you're left with now just two. And you smile with yourself, knowing that as that second cloud begins to fade, all your worries are just letting go, letting them leave and dissipate, just like that second cloud is now gone. And we say goodbye to that last little cloud, knowing that all our worries and all our stresses are just things we put upon ourselves. And we know that whatever happens, it will turn out okay. And we take a nice deep breath in and breathe in this calm and allow our bodies to relax entirely. Just stay here a while and just enjoy that peace of feeling. And in a moment, I'm going to awaken you. And when I reach the count of five, and only on the count of five, will your eyes open and you're going to feel energized, fully awake, and ready to take on this wonderful new day. So one, coming back into the room. And two, all normal healthy sensations returning to every part of you. Three, beginning to feel your body against the chair, or your legs against the chair, or your back against the chair. And four, beginning to stretch. A nice deep breath in, and five, opening your eyes, feeling wide awake and fantastic. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> so how was it for you, Michael? Um, it was very relaxing, so I felt body kind of like nice. Relaxing. Uh, clouds was a bit more challenging. <laughs> so oh, was it? Put names on the clouds, but I was much quicker trying to get rid of them. So by the time you got to like eight clouds, I was already without any. Like there's no more clouds. <laughs> take them off. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It was wonderful. Thank you. It's, You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, good, good relaxation. Um, yes. Good. Good. So there's various things that within the hypnotic state that we actually do. So it's, that would be what we would call an induction and a deepener. We didn't do any sort of work within that space. So there's all these techniques that we're taught to support the subconscious mind and the, the conscious mind to make changes. What you've experienced is really just sort of that, that first going under without any sort of work being done. But going to the favorite place of relaxation is always a good place to start. Any other questions out there with anybody? Uh, my favorite question, so can, can the favorite place of relaxation, I have no idea why I ended out in that, so that was quite fascinating. Okay. Um, but uh, it wasn't relaxation, I was dancing. Ooh, okay. So you decided to go into joy. I, I didn't just, and... it just happened. <laughs> so <it's> like... <laughs> well, good, well done. You know, who's to say? I mean, perhaps you the, the experience of, joyful movement was relaxing for you that's what you needed to do at that time and it's wonderful just how our subconscious mind can surprise us i think that's the lesson is like wow i wasn't expecting that and you, what you did was which is a really good example of that is your mind surprised you which shows that you were in a state of hypnosis which is where the subconscious and conscious were a little bit more um coherent with another so mm -hmm. the conscious mind you weren't controlling it like you said with all the clouds disappearing but you got there and noticed something different that surprised you and that is excellent okay thank you well any done. Other questions anyone either we can put you know you can put your video on or just put your question on the chat or maybe everybody are under completely Everybody awake, please let me know that you're okay, because this is actually important, what we did this therapy there. So let me know. Just, just give us a head, thumbs up. Dora, Beata, and give me a thumbs up that you're awake and okay. Oh, there we go. They're all Good. Excellent. <laughs> all right, then. Good. So they're all great. They're all feeling good. Uh, I good. Don't have any specific questions, but that's... That was wonderful. Good, uh, thank you. We are having it recorded, so uh, yeah, that's 
there's no questions, just saying great. Uh, and uh, so that will allow people to kind of like maybe keep on practicing and doing that. Yeah. And, uh, yes. And okay. Wonderful. Perfect. Well, um, much love till next time, everybody, and stay well. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Thanks. And you. Bye. Bye.